Hey guys, Happy New Year. This is my first video of 2018. I am at Latours Auto in South Park, Pennsylvania, where I shoot a lot of my case studies. And the first vehicle we have for this year is a 2011 Ford Taurus. And the complaint is an intermittent no crank. History of the vehicle, it's already had a starter replaced and it looks like it has some new cables put in it, maybe a new battery. We just pushed it into the garage, battery was dead, put a jump pack on it or a charger on it, and of course, turn the key, fires right up. I don't know if this is ever going to make it to production, but I'm gonna try. I always tell all of my students at the technical college I teach at, a little plug for Rosedale Technical College, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I always tell my students, if you can't duplicate the fault, you can't fix it. So we'll see how this goes. Right now, the vehicle is cranking and starting. Let's start with a visual inspection. Very first thing I noticed is, well, number one, it looks like the battery has been replaced recently. Hard to tell. There is some corrosion on that hold down, so maybe not. But it does have a newer positive battery cable. Somebody had cut the harness and I've never really seen this kind of connection before. Some type of a heat shrink wrap that's on here. And you see that it's melted the side of the air filter housing. And look at the thickness of the main cable, the factory cable. So just down to the right is the factory cable. It has some, just some tape around it, but you see how fat that cable is. You see how skinny this cable is. Then there's this wrap here this has definitely been replaced, this cable. And I believe the heat here is because the diameter of this is too small. And um, it created heat and melted the housing. So this needs to be corrected properly. Uh, I think we can still troubleshoot the car with this setup. You can see this is an extra adapter that came with this cable end. Not good stuff here. And then there's another uh, positive cable here. This terminal has been replaced. I don't like it at all. And this looks like some, something aftermarket attached here. Uh, not good things need to be corrected. I do not believe that this will cause any of our issues. This was in an attempt to fix it, in my opinion. But um, just wanted to point that out. Something else I forgot to share with you guys. There was an issue after the starter replacement. And I'm going to need Pete to come back to verify this. It's been a few weeks since he told me about this. Uh, but when the starter was replaced and they finished, they connected the battery terminal and either the car cranked on its own or they started it with the key and then couldn't shut the car off. It, it was something along the lines of that and it made me start thinking about the ignition switch just based off of the symptoms alone. And guys, that's as far as I've gotten. I don't know codes on this, if there are any. Again, the car came in, battery was almost dead. Um, I'm just hoping we can duplicate this, the issue. And, and mainly for us is the no crank. The customer, after the starter's been replaced and somebody else did some battery terminal stuff, Pete knows nothing about that. Um, the customer still continues to have this intermittent no crank situation with this car. So let's see what we find. All right, while we're here and we have the opportunity to show this, um, I don't believe this ties into what we're doing as far as a, a bad battery, but I was just thinking, well, this car could have just simply a bad battery as far as the intermittent no crank. However, however, um, that doesn't explain our continuing to run after or continuing to crank, whichever symptom it is. But let me just show you this real quick test. Given that this battery was dead, uh, the procedure is um, a three minute high charge test of a dead battery using a battery charger, put it on a 100 amp or 200 amp start mode for three minutes. And we wanna make sure voltage on the battery does not go over 16 volts. If it stays under 16, that means the battery is absorbing, it's like an electrical sponge, uh, these, the current flow and uh, suggest that the battery is still good. If that battery immediately spikes over 16 volts, stop charging it, it's bad, replace it. Let me show you. All right, right now I have this set on a 60 amp, 
uh, what I'm gonna do is put it on a engine start 250 amp. Now you don't wanna do this for long, but let's do it, see what we got. Yeah, see that immediately went to 16, but I had been charging this at, at 60 for about 15 minutes or so. So uh, not a valid test here, guys. This needs to be only done on a dead battery. You can't do this fast charge test on a battery that has some charge in it. I think I'm saying that correctly. So even on the 80 amp boost mode, you can see that we're going over 16 volts. This is right now set to a 60 amp. I don't like that, that this is already going that high, even on a 80 amp boost. But again, the test is only valid on a dead battery, so not a great test for us. I'm still suspecting that this battery could have an issue as well, but I don't believe that that's our problem. Okay, people, let's identify this vehicle. There it is, 2011, 3.5 liter V6. All right, doing a code scan of the whole system. Their immobilizer unit ECM communication error is certainly going to give us a no crank. I'll let this go, it's still detecting modules here. I don't know if you guys heard when I turned the key on the clicking going on in the dash. That sounded like a temperature blend door to me. These use uh, electronic motors that move the mode door and it's sitting there ratcheting. Something messed up with the mode doors. But we have an immobilizer unit ECM COM error code. That gives us some direction for sure. The 1602 fault. Airbag system lost communication with restraints. Battery voltage code, of course, in the airbag system. Battery voltage code in the anti-theft system. We have a PATS transponder fault. Restraint deployment indicator circuit fault. That's in the anti-theft. Interesting. Instrument panel restraint deployment indicator circuit. We have a PATS transponder code. Battery voltage again. Audio battery voltage. Battery voltage on the display interface module. Battery voltage on the ventilating HVAC system. All right. I mean, obviously what we need to start with is this PATS transponder code and this, um, this immobilizer unit ECM communication error for the intermittent no crank. But what, I, what concerns me is the other symptom and I still don't know what it is. Pete's still not back yet. Uh, I'm here by myself, so I can't ask him, uh, but I remember, again, him telling me that either the vehicle continued to crank when he was done, or it he couldn't shut it off. It was a really weird symptom that, to me, wouldn't be associated with an, an immobilizer issue, um, but it's really all I have to go with right now is this immobilizer code. Unless, of course, I can duplicate this issue. Let's see if we have any data parameters that would be helpful. One of the things I learned about Fords a long time ago is low battery voltage can set these immobilizer faults. I'm just going to try to start this a couple of times and see what I can make it do, if anything. There it is, right there. That's what we need. I got a real dim light when I crank it. Hear that? And then the lights dim. Sorry, I, not a real dim light, but I hear a, I hear a very audible, loud click, and I'm noticing that my dome lights are dimming. It's just it's suggesting current flow, a decent amount of it. Now, granted, my battery's weak. I have a charger on it. This is what we needed it to do right here. So let's do this. While wow, this is a, a click, no start. Let's go to the codes menu. I'm gonna clear faults from, from this engine computer. Just gotta remember that immobilizer code we had. Oh, it would be there. Oh, something I learned about the Snap-on unit. You'd think I would know this. If I go to the Home tab, then go to my 
vehicle record button down here at the bottom it actually has the codes that are in here and it stores them for you so it's pretty sweet so that my point is I'm gonna clear these fault codes out of the engine computer and I was I, I was gonna write them down I don't need to All right, so no codes present, pending. That's after clearing them. Memory codes. I got a P1000. This just means I cleared the codes. My monitors haven't run yet. I'm gonna try cranking it again. This is our issue. And let's see if we have anything pending. No, no faults. All right, cool. Um, I believe the, the codes we had for the immobilizer system were just revolving around a, uh, a, a weak battery on this car. Again, I've seen this before, but we now have a no crank and I'm by myself, which really sucks. I really need Pete here to crank this for me while I do some voltage drop measurements under the hood. So that's the plan. We need to do voltage drop tests under the hood. Coming up. All right. Where is my starter? Let's get this air filter out of the way. I'm about to set a mass airflow fault code here, but I don't care. I'm hoping I can get to this starter from the top, I'll not have to rack it. Check out that melted air filter housing. Not cool at all. You know, our issues could be right here, but Pete said when he, okay, cool, my starter's right here on the top. That's awesome. Pete said when he put the starter in it, this wasn't here. So the, this customer took it somewhere else and had this stuff done. That's why I'm not suspecting our issue is in here. I'm gonna go right to the starter and do some voltage measurements. All right, I don't know if I'll show you any of the behind the scenes on that and how long it took me to set up this camera shot. My starter is right here. All right, the solenoid's right here. Um, let me give you a zoomed out view as much as I can at the moment. Air cleaner housing's here. Battery's just to my right, right here. And below the upper rad hose, my starter solenoid sits here. The heavy cable, which is where my middle finger is, this heavy cable is the one that's hot all the time. We're gonna do our measurements right on the stud of this, and there's a reason we're going to the stud first, so the copper threads. And I wanna remind you guys, I have other no crank videos. Uh, what you're gonna see is, uh, if I put this on YouTube, what you're gonna see is an icon right next to me, a little exclamation point. It's gonna guide you to another no crank video that was well received it was actually on a hyundai very similar strategy i'm applying here to this ford so make sure you guys check that out if this ends up being on scanner dan or premium i will put a uh, related video in the note of this so that's where you'll find it depending on where i put this video but first check will be on the heavy cable that's this one and then just below that there's another another bolt and that's this smaller wire here goes down to it and that's the one that's hot when we're cranking so top one's hot all the time bottom one's hot when we're cranking we're gonna check both of those while we are cranking loaded circuit test you don't need a fancy tool to do what I'm about to show you I am using my Varus to do this test because I can sync it with this and put the numbers up for you guys to make for easy viewing. So I'm gonna leave my voltmeter negative lead right here on the battery and my positive lead I'm taking off of the battery. We have a charger on here too, so remember that as we go. All right, first one will be a heavy cable on the stud itself. You see we have battery voltage on that. 15.4 volts. Let's turn this thing down a little bit now. 
That's a slow charge. That's a 10 amp slow charge now. And the key with this is going to be to crank it over. So I'm going to look at this meter. You guys will be able to see everything going inside the car. Pete, you're back. Perfect timing. I need you to, this is not starting right now. Can you crank this for me? No, it's no problem. I was ignoring you probably. Okay, listen, while, before you do this test, we're, we're live here. We've got your voice on camera. Um, when the starter was replaced, it continued to crank or it cranked automatically as soon as you connected the battery? As soon as I connected the battery, it cranked off. It cranked and the car started. And you weren't... It was just cranking. Oh, it didn't start. It just cranked. It cranking. So the key was off. The key was you off. connected the battery and it started cranking on its own. Had to disconnect the battery and stop it from cranking. And then after that, everything was okay. And after that, it started up and ran fine. How weird is that? All right, so if you guys didn't hear that, the issue was after the starter was replaced, key was off, battery was disconnected. As soon as he connected the battery, the car started cranking on its own. So I don't know if that that's going to help us yet, but right now this is a no crank. Pete, we're doing our first voltage measurement. This is on the stud. Go ahead and crank it. Son of a All right, shut it off. Damn it. I didn't touch anything. Try it again. I had it. I took too long setting up this stupid camera. Arr. That sucks. The security light yeah, the security light is normal to blink with the key off. Yeah, it's not a problem. Try it a couple more times, Pete. Damn it. See, right now, guys, I'm afraid to touch anything and start wiggling connections because I want to catch this issue. If I start moving things, I'm, I'm, I may not. The only thing I did was... Um, you know, remove the air filter housing. So that does kind of suggest maybe that, that my issue is, is, is in the wiring in here. I really didn't touch anything, but ah, it sucks. I'm so mad. Definitely don't like this positive cable. Hey, Pete. Yeah. You said this cable was not like this when it left here. Like it, when we first started, yeah. Oh, it was. Yeah. Melt it. All right, so I misquoted you guys on, on, on something here. This Mickey Mouse cable here is uh, one that um, this was on here when the vehicle came before anything was done. Right, Pete? This, this cable, I see, I misunderstood you. I thought this cable was put on after the starter. This came in like this. Came in just like. So I mean, our issue is is most likely then right here, like this. And it was it was the, real hot. Yeah, the fact that well, of course it's hot. Um, give me a razor blade. We're gonna open this up. I believe this is a really really simple one, Pete, and it is a classic voltage drop on a main cable. Uh, this is gonna be our issue. I thought this was gonna be a little bit more complex. It doesn't look like it's gonna be. That doesn't explain though, seriously, if this ends up being our issue, Pete, this does not explain why the vehicle would crank on its own when you first connected it up. Connect it, crank it. But, <laughs> but that's, not a, that's not one of the customer's uh -huh. complaints. Like that never yeah, happened, that never, happened, never yeah. happened again. It only happened once. This is a computer controlled starting system. You sure the key wasn't on when you connected the battery? Key Positive. Wasn't in there, wasn't yeah, the key, I had the key in my hand. Okay. Yeah, it was I'm like, Pete, look. That's crazy. Okay. I think our issue, this is all live here too, guys. So just so you're aware, I don't, I don't mind. I'll, I can bleep out your F-bomb. No big deal. No, it's no big deal. I, that's what the beauty of editing. I can put a little beep in there. That's fine. Yeah, you did, but no big deal. I mean, I've, it happens. All right. So I'm concerned about this. Let's, let's, before I open that, Pete, can you try cranking it a couple more times? I'm going to see if I can maybe just kind of touch this and, and recreate it. I don't want to move it too much, but 
There it is. Yeah. There. All right. Hold it in the crank. Wait. One second. One second. Let's. So we're clear, guys. My voltage right here on this battery is what we're reading. We're reading 12.8. That's hot all the time. This is a perfect example of why you want to do loaded circuit voltage drop test. Turn the key. Um. Hit in the crank position. All right, so you see we have a 12 volt drop on this system, right? So our, our problem is definitely in the cable itself between battery positive and here. Now, one other piece that you want to be careful of and you can get burned on is I'm measuring on the stud. We might not have a cable issue, although we know we do, I think, in this situation. But what you'd want to do next in a typical situation before you say the cable is bad is you want to go now to the eyelet. Remember, I was on the stud. We now want to go to the eyelet of the starter. This is more procedure, guys. It's not needed for this car. And by the eyelet, I'm saying we want to go on the area that is attached to the cable now, not the stud, because we could have an issue of this connection right here. You can have an issue where the the eyelet is good, but it's not making contact with the um, the stud itself. Hope I'm making sense on that. Maybe at the end of this, I will draw a picture for you guys who understand what I'm trying to illustrate. Now, I have seen a voltage drop on a cable. So you see the difference on where I'm connected. What this will address is any eyelet to stud connection issues. I have seen it before. Uh, Pete, go ahead and crank that. And you can see the same, hold, hold it in the crank position. You see the same voltage drop, okay. See the same voltage drop there. So that means our connection at the eyelet and at the stud is good. Our problem is up this way toward the battery. We have a cable issue. And, and for sure, with the melted air cleaner housing and this Mickey Mouse setup that's on here, um, we have our issue right there. And it happened as soon as I touched it. So let's see if we can recreate it again, Pete. Jump inside and, and crank it for me and I'll, I'll wiggle this connection. Hold it in the crank position. Shut it off, crank it again. Okay, good. All right, uh, stay there one second, Pete. I need to do two more quick checks and we're done. Change the positive cable and put the right cable on it. The whole cable? Yep, whole cable. Should have been done that way in the first place. Oh, I know you didn't do it, Pete. I wasn't throwing you under the bus. All right, listen, guys. This. No, I know she did. That's cool. Yeah, no, let's be clear about about this. The customer brought this car to Pete, said put a starter in the car, and that's what he did. So, all right. Um, this is the time where poking a hole in a wire is absolutely acceptable. We are going to be changing this wire anyway. So what I'm going to do is show you guys a, a measurement before this splice. As long as I can make it not crank. Go ahead, crank it. Okay, 12.6 there. Let off. And then after this, crank it. And let off. So the problem is, is me wiggling this. Crank it. Ah. All right. Hang on. Let me get this back to where I, where I don't have to hold it. By me wiggling this, I'm kind of not helping things here. Crank it. Again. Again. Just keep trying it to make it not. can't get it all right so the issue though guys you saw when I wiggled this that's where our issue was so all you would do is measure it here crank it so we had battery voltage in the crank position come down here after it and then what you'll see is that voltage drop and that means your problem is right here 
There's another way you could do it, and you could go to battery positive with your negative lead, and then you'd measure the drop itself. So I could actually go right to the battery up here or use another pin and stab it here, and then I could do a voltage comparison. But again, loaded circuit is the key. Um, I'm gonna pull this apart. Let's take a look inside just for a final shot and we'll be done with this. This needs a cable. As far as what to do, Pete, yeah, I... it's gonna be, this will be aftermarket, so we're gonna reuse this. But this, this cable and this cable are probably one unit. You're gonna need to go to Ford and I, I'm just suggesting we change this whole piece of harness. You know, however difficult that may be is a different topic in itself. But I think this cable goes to the power distribution box. And then this main cable comes down to the starter itself. It's not gonna be cheap. Maybe what we could do is leave this one alone and then just change this one. Cause the only real place that that goes is to this positive post right here. Let's see what it looks like. Let me open it up. All right, something else, guys. What created the heat here was resistance in this cable. So um, just seeing the melted air cleaner housing was, was really enough to say we had a problem here. And I guess the reason that I didn't really think this was gonna be our issue was based on the symptom of the car cranking after the starter was replaced. I don't know, it looks like a, some kind of a, a designed replacement piece. Yeah, this is like loose and just kind of hanging here. Half of these cables are, are charred. It has connection problems right inside of this. This is no good either. I don't, like, I don't like this setup at all. Let's see if we can duplicate this one more time for the, for the audience here, Pete, and get, a, get it to be a a no start what I'll do is I will go right here all right good try to crank that I've moved it enough now that it probably is gonna start every time shut it off go ahead yeah a couple more times yeah, we missed our window, but that's okay. That's all right, Pete. All right, so the lesson here, guys, is voltage drop tests. This is the key. Doing a no crank situation on any car. You wanna make sure that you're checking the circuit with it loaded, and in this case, it would be just holding the key in the crank position. And you know, it's something that people forget to do because you don't think you have to. When you have a main cable that's hot all the time, you, just, you see battery voltage there, you say, oh, that, that circuit's fine. No, it's not. You have to load the circuit. I want to remind you guys again, look at the description of this video. You'll find related videos where I've done other no crank problems. Between this video and the other ones I'll have listed here, you guys can handle a no crank problem on any car that you deal with. It does not have to be a Ford or a Hyundai or a GM. It doesn't matter. These are universal principles and um, we're gonna let this video go as it is. I don't see any reason to attack the immobilizer code that we had because I believe low battery voltage was our issue there. Pete, you might wanna suggest putting a battery in this too. I don't know when this battery was replaced. I believe she replaced it before she brought it. The yeah, but if you look at it, look at all the corrosion on this. This has been on there for a little while, I think. And I, I, don't, I don't trust it. I mean, it only sat outside for a week and the battery was dead. Well, so unless you tried it though before. Yeah, but it's not. It shouldn't kill the battery with a no crank. It doesn't start. That light was flashing though, or something. The alarm. Or... Yeah, but that wasn't until you unless put the key in it. On, I don't know. Yeah, it's possible. To it. I got you. I'll have to tell it. All right. So wiring repairs are needed. Again, description of this video, guys. Make sure you open it up and look at it. You also find some uh, other relevant information that will be helpful to you. Guys, thanks for joining me. Happy New Year.